do you do you feel you understand now, Max? What happened? Is there a can we say that there's a kind of a recognised, accepted version of events? Well, I think to be fair to the Sussexes, they never said it was a high speed car chase. And I spoke to um, one of their security detail yesterday on the phone afterwards. He used to be in the Secret Service. He said he's never been through anything like this, but he was saying that he was sticking they were sticking to the rules of the road they weren't um trying to speed because they weren't trying to cause an added danger their the whole point is that around them there was a lot of chaos and pedestrians and other drivers were at risk so that was their main concern they didn't want to add to that uh some debate about the length of um this chase so they said it was more than two hours um, and then you, you hear from officials saying what well, it couldn't have been that long but i think that you know the gray area here is i don't think they're suggesting that it was a high-speed car chase around Manhattan for two hours. They're saying it was just a chase and it was, it was, it was scary for them. And the whole thing took two hours, which appears to be the case because it started at 10 and they, they ended up getting where they wanted at, at midnight. So that's a two-hour period. Uh, yeah, and then it's kind of whose version of events do you want to believe because there's an agency um, that, were, that takes pictures from some of these paparazzi in New York called Backgrid, and they are suggesting that actually it was vehicles in the royal entourage which were uh, behaving recklessly. So we're waiting to see, really. I mean, we haven't used any images yet. I haven't even seen all of the images. Uh, perhaps people need to you know, look at the images and actually see the video to see how dramatic this was. But, of course, it is in the context of what Harry grew up with yeah. and his traumas and i think it would all have felt a much more accentuated to him either way and that's the problem isn't it is that, that he has got a, a, every right in the world to be worried about paparazzi behavior because of what happened to his mum and yet this is a couple you must find this when you report on them that come with a bunch of skeptics around them who say well of course they talk about this because they may they now make their living about not only being in the public eye but talking about being in the public eye yeah, and also as people got get to know their narrative, which is you know has been very clear, um, there's some cynicism about why they're doing this and how does it fit into their narrative. And it does, doesn't it, fit into the narrative that they wanted to keep their security, uh, the government wouldn't allow them to keep their security when they left their royal roles, um, and that you know they are constantly vulnerable to intrusion and danger in this case. Um, so it's a very clear example that illustrates a lot of the stuff that they've said in Netflix, for example, or indeed the book. Yeah, and indeed part of his narrative about suing people, you know, he's got six legal actions against various media groups uh, in the courts at the moment. What do the palace make of all of this, Max? Do they regard this as something that they don't ever comment directly on? Do you get briefings? Do you get people from the, the palace, either of King Charles or probably more likely William and Kate? Do you get whispers from them? What are they? How do they treat a story like this? Uh, well, not anymore. I mean, we used to get a bit of that. Um, now it's just no comment when it comes to any of these stories. And I did speak to someone on the Sussex side that said none of the royal family had reached out to see if he was OK. <laughs> that was quite early on yesterday. Uh, but they're just saying no comment whatsoever. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but that is just their policy on all of this now because, uh, you know, I haven't even discussed it in great length with them, but it, either it's, you know, they don't want to feed these narratives because every time they do, it escalates. Yeah. Or that they just they they um, are just leaving Harry and Meghan to carry on their own lives whilst the royal family looks after the monarchy. Do you feel that this is maybe extremely cynical? But it seems strikes me that often a lot of William and Kate's behaviour tacitly is a kind of we're we're the opposite of Harry and Meghan. There's a sort of anti Harry and Meghan in the way they behave. Or is that just by virtue of still being in the royal family in the way that Harry and Meghan aren't? It feels that at least someone somewhere in the people who manage the amazing image of Kate and William like that contrast somewhere along the line. Well, you know, I, do, I think personally, I think they're just very focused on yeah. rebuilding the monarchy. Um, you know, of course, there's huge amounts of upset particularly, you know, about a lot of the leaks in the book and the indiscretions in the book. And it went to a whole new level, I think, when there was criticisms of Kate and Camilla in the book. Um, I think that they, you know, they're committed to the monarchy and they want to, that the priority right now is to look after that and not to sort of rebuild necessarily with Harry until he's, I mean, Harry's argument is that he wants to have meetings and sit down with them and sort all of this out. I think they probably do as well, but they just don't feel as if there's the trust or 
you know, calmness in the relationship that it's going to be possible to do that. Anything that they will discuss with him, they're worried that we'll end up in a book or a, or a TV show. Yeah, and this, this is, and this is rightly or wrongly yet another example of, of calmness not being around uh, Harry and Meghan.